Hello, welcome to a 3v3 cast. Starting off in the bottom lane, we have Max Power on the Force Commander. In mid, we have our beloved caster, Indrid. And in the top lane, we have Dark Riku playing as the Apothecary. Now for the red team, we have Zetalk in the top lane playing as the Warlock. We have the Warp Spider Exarch played by Morgan MLG Man, also known as Adeptus Nubis in the mid lane. And in the bottom lane, against Max Power, we have Agaxis. Starting off, we already have a bit of action going down top of the structure onto the scouts here from Zetalk. Doing a nice little bit of damage there, but scouts being ranged will just kite the Warlock as much as possible. Warlock going behind some green cover and switches to his ranged weapon where he just thrusts his hand and casts lightning on these scouts. Does about 15 or so DPS. It's not very high, but it's just a sidearm anyway. Now Dire Avengers coming in, the scout's going to be forced away. Tactical Marines will probably go behind this green cover or will stay behind the green cover of that little wall here. In mid we have a bit of dancing around. Heretic still on full models. Did take a little bit of damage there from that warp spider. And it looks like we might actually have the Warp Spider just go in here. Meanwhile, in the bottom, again, more standing off. Very nice structure on these tactical marines. The structure does do extra damage to units which are behind cover. So these tacks behind green cover do take extra damage from that destructor. Very nice special here from the Warlock as well. Shotgun Scouts, Shotgun Blast is on cooldown. Indrid is flanking Morgan as Morgan is trying to come in here for max power. These heretics do need to be a little bit careful here. But the Force Commander Bowcry will knock these Banshees over. Banshees and Heretics will be forced away. We have a lot of ranged firepower here in the form of triple Dire Avengers here for Aguxus and some more Dire Avengers and the Warps by the Exarch here for Morgan. <laughs> oh, look. Um, is chasing down the Force Command or the Play Champion even walks by that sheep and that's special once those Tatscom Marines Dire Avengers are just kiting around his Force Commander as much as possible. When in Battle Cry does do a special but it's only in a cone in front of him so you can just go to the side and avoid the special from doing anything. But the triple Dire Avengers here will get forced off from a Guxus Warlock. They're getting a destructor and the Warps find gain another special as well. These tactical marines quite low but on three models still, Warp Spider is not able to get any models. And we do see a full retreat with the exception of this Warp Spider Exarch. Meanwhile, top looks like Z-Talk's actually forcing away Dark Riku, but it's just down to Dire Avengers and an Apo. But we have more Dire Avengers coming in here for Z-Talk. Guardian weapons teams for everyone on red team now. We have a second one on the way for Z-Talk. And for blue team, we have a third CSM squad for Indrid here. I don't know if that's an Overwatch mistake or if he actually wants triple CSM. Triple CSM can be... I feel like it can be countered a bit easily. There we go, he cancels it. It was an Overwatch mistake. Triple CSM does get very expensive to actually run given high amounts of upkeep that it costs and if you bleed models as well it costs 66 requisition. Triple CSM, not the best idea. This Apo will probably get forced away. It does have the Storm Bolter. Can sit there at range. Does do 32 DPS. Does actually do a lot of damage as well. It's a really nice upgrade on the Apo. Gets some level very quickly. Picking off models from range. And given that he has 600 starting health, does means it means that he doesn't have to go into melee combat with such a low health pool. Especially on 3v3. If he gets doubled, he can't stay in melee combat for very long, even with a Sanguine Chainsword and even with his heal ability. Ideally, wants to be healing tax or something else rather than your own hero, if you can actually do that. These tacks kind of just sitting here, can't really push forward that guiding weapons team. We do have some scouts here with a shotgun and a sergeant. That warlock going in. Merciless Witchblade getting purchased here. Heretics do miss their Doom Blast. Destructor. Destructor is not going to go down, but we do see that the power node has been taken. Havoc setting up here for Indrid. And we do see that Zetalk is just going to have to pull back here as he is getting doubled. And Morgan MLG Man is making his way up this staircase now into top lane. Kinetic Pulse onto the Sergeant there of those scouts. They're trying to melee down this Guardian Weapons team. And that Kinetic Pulse actually took two of the models there with him. The Guardian Weapons team is just going to do a full retreat. Scouts here could probably throw a grenade if they have it available onto this Guardian Weapons team. Although that Merciless Witchblade is draining the energy, but the grenade still does go off. And that grenade will take down two models on that Guardian Weapons team. Banshees and the Warlock going in, and then Scouts will go down here for Riku. The Kinetic Pulse and the Banshees and Warlock on retreat, which is going to be a bit too much for them to handle. But there is a large ranged blob here for Riku and Indrid. Double CSM, double tax, and Havocs as well. And Indrid does have Worship Support available and Grenade Launcher Heretics to interrupt this second Guardian Weapons team here, which is 
for Morgan. MOG man. We are just banned. She's flying in right now. They do have their aspects of strength. They are using the screen, but they are only to be met by Havocs. Like Champion is going to get forced away. We do actually have a Holofield going down here from some ranges. These Banshees do need to back away. They're taking a lot of damage, especially will keep them from keep the CSM from milling them down. But Banshees will be able to get away here. Holofield actually stealthing them as well. And that'll be back top. We do have the Storm Shield here for the Force Commander. And a very nice choice here for a Gux is just to get a Merciless Witchblade since it does drain 15 energy per attack. And Storm Shield is extremely reliant on energy, draining energy every few seconds of use. And also costing energy to activate. Kinetic Pulse though, gonna knock over some Heretics and some CSM. Do you actually have the Apo heal coming in on the CSM? And it looks like both armies are just gonna make their way down to mid. And this will allow red teams who just capped the contested VP of Guxus with his double die revengers here. Gonna try and bash a little bit of power. That warp spider doesn't need to be a bit careful. He's just been spending the entire time capping mid. You can see it just belongs all to red team. And blue team are just making their way down to mid now to go and cap it. Rangers should be able to force these Havocs away. Classic Pulse probably on cooldown. That was some Dire Avengers flanking. No grenade though, no aspect of the Avenger. So no retreat grenade, but Indrid is coming behind the Guxus, and I'm not sure if he notices that all spider does need to back away. Port Spider is getting very ballsy here, it does back away. Now after some grenade launcher heretics of Guxus, needs to be careful of his double die Avengers. Do actually have some retreat grenades, but unfortunately they are going to miss. As Indrid is the mid player, they will take a slightly different path than if it was Max retreating his tactical marines. But this Warp Spider will go down to these tacks and Apo with his Storm Bolster and he will die in the mid. And Blue Team are just going to cap the entire center. Meanwhile, Z Talk is actually going to push and even cap this power, decap this requisition. ASM is going to get forced away. Mercer Switchblade, even a good purchase against the ASMs, prevents them from jumping twice. If you can get an attack, that devastates for not focusing down the Warlock. Warlock will get in there, does do a very nice special, knocking those devastators over. The Champion's Rose preventing the Warlock from getting knocked over by that shotgun blast and allowing him to use an energy shield. That play champion, though, will go down. Does have the Mucus Discharge, but was not used. Another special here from the Warlock. These Devastators is unable to do much right now with the Warlock right on them. That Merciless Witchblade and 65 melee DPS, 130 melee damage per swing, so it's very good at taking models down. Boss Commander is backing away already in the chat, bit of negativity, game is over. Triple Elder, another Merciless Witchblade here on Z-Talk, that special actually did land, looked like it was going to miss that. But the full auto though from the Apo, the Z Talk does not have the Champion's Robes. Champion's Robes, when you have the energy shield turned on, it will stop the full auto from working. It will still do the damage. The heavy death cage spin on the Warp Spider. Warp Spider will get forced away though, Z quite low. It doesn't have actually any more energy to continue that heavy death cage. So Blue Team are just making a big push to mid. And Red Team are trying to converge on this, but Blue Team are very well protected right now. Dire Avengers all grouping up here. Do you need to be careful of these grenade launcher heretics, although they're on a hill, so grenade launchers tend to fall a little bit short unless you do a ground target. Where these grenades are landing, and these Dire Avengers are going to go down. They're not behind the energy shield either. And Dire Avengers will go down here for Morgan, MLG man. Triple Dire Avengers here for a Gux is making their way towards mid. Play champion is still dead on the ground. Generators gain repurchased. The farm top is still currently dead right now. But double CSM moving in. NG Shield goes down. I think that Guardian Weapons team actually took it down. And do actually have a grenade barrage. It's going to go land onto the Dire Avengers. Banshee is just streaming in onto these heretics, though. Some grenades here for Guxus will hit some retreating tacks. Second grenade will clip these tacks and do a little bit of damage. Max power jumps in with the ASMs. That's going to force these triple Dire Avengers back to base. And Warlock here. He's taking a lot of damage, but will get a cap. Actually, he won't get a cap. He's taking so much damage there. The Apo and these double attacks are just doing so much damage. And what's about the Exarch like, is coming in with a full auto on the floor. So the heavy death gauge spin at Banshees are here, but the Banshees actually fall a little bit short. These scouts are going to get away. Banshees kind of just sit there in range stance. Storm Shield on that Force Commander allows him to walk out with his army up to this Guiding Weapons team and just force it off. Top power still uncapped here for Blue Team. 
and do see that everyone is now at tier 2. Max power still taking up, but nearly finished a tier 2. And first purchase in tier 2 for blue team is going to be this whirlwind and some P devs here for Riku. Meanwhile, on the other team, we have a Falcon and a Warp Spider squad here. Surprised about the Warp Spider squad purchase. In fact, I think that was actually purchased with red because you do see that Morgan MLG man actually has no red right now. So that must have been the Warp Spider calling. Allows you to save on some requisition at the cost of some red. CSM moving up top, both CSM with Eternal War, P devs are set up, not in range of anything just yet. Whirlwind gained very close to this wall, needs to be careful not to crush it, it will just park itself here. Fires some missiles, does hit some banshees in mid. Boss commander gained the thunder hammer, no other upgrades yet, no armor or accessory. ASM are actually going to jump in here. We do actually have a last cannon upgrade onto that Devastator squad. The last cannon though, not in range of this Falcon or even having its sight blocked. For the Emperor was used, was not able to get a shot though. For the Emperor, allowing him to probably two shot the Falcon if it doesn't get any repair support. But with the Triple Die Avengers, it should be able to be repaired and get out of there. Bit of friendly fire there from Riku against Indrid. Some grenades. Grenades will actually take down a tactical marine model. Merciless Witchblade knocking these tactical marines over. Falcon is going to crush some walls here. Max is coming in from behind. Does have ASMs and scouts, but this last cannon devastator squad is not in range of this Falcon right now. We do actually have a bit of a push top injury. CSM backing away here. Peter's going to get interrupted by Zetalk's Warlock. And the Whirlwind actually trying to focus down the Warlock. But here come the Banshees fleeting in here. Banshee's going to try and jump onto some CSM and try and jump onto the play champion who does have the mucus discharge and you can see him heal up everything around him. Pedev's going to get a shot off. Who we'll actually hit some Dire Avengers there, not doing too much damage. Raps is here with the Aspiring Champion. Going to get knocked over by a Kinetic Pulse. Warp Spiders, you need to be a bit careful, they're very fragile. Having 400 HP remaining. Banshee's going to fight these Raps as we'll land a special on them. Touch of Nurgle though will force these Banshees to retreat away before taking too much damage. Two models down for these Raptors. Scouts could throw a grenade onto this Guiding Weapons team now. They're taking a lot of damage trying to do so. These Warp Spiders do need to be very careful. The x just goes down though. And that's 25 power gone. And Blue Team will successfully push this top area. Meanwhile, in bottom, Falcon just going around, crushing as many walls as possible. Triple Dire Avengers are loaded inside, I guess. One squad exiting. Wraithguard on the field now for Z Talk. Very good purchase against setup teams. Hollow Field from Rangers once again. But they are protectors nearby in the form of the Suspiring Champion on this Heretic squad. P devs quite far away. Sounds like they were going to go after a shot, but didn't. 225 VPs to 450. Last cannon setting up though. Falcon is going to be forced away. I don't think they have vision, but the Wolf Spider is already on top of this last cannon squad anyway. It does actually land a shot onto the Falcon though. The second shot was after the Wolf Spider. But the Falcon does have an energy shield actually queued up as the Guxus does take up to tier 3. Well, we need to be careful grenades as well. But the Whirlwind actually not taking that much damage from the grenades does take quite a bit. But it's not enough. One more grenade may have done it. Grenades do about 60 damage to vehicles each. Play Champion forcing melee. Play Champion does actually have only 8 melee DPS, but does actually have a melee charge. Which allows them to effectively tie up units. Banshee's coming in now. We do actually have the Exarch leading this Raveguard squad that just died. You can see that they actually end up stunned when their Exarch dies. The Unit that provides them with Wraith Side, giving them extra movement speed. Banshee's coming in, but Banshee's taking a lot of damage. There is a second set of Banshees, though, from Z Talk. And these Banshees are a bit healthier, but still taking a lot of damage. Indrid might lose his Plague Champion here, but the Banshees are going to be backing away early here. And these Raptors doing a lot of work on the street. Does actually kill the Exarch. You can see the Exarch was the one with the spear, and now she is missing that, the Executioner. Raps is going to be jumping in onto these rangers with the whirlwind actually knocking back these rangers as well. A lot of disruption here for blue team. Guiding weapons teams all over the place. Walks by the lands a special there. Does actually have the power claws giving them some heavy melee. 
Loki that was going to land the shot. It's going to go after this Guardian Weapons team, but the Guardian Weapons team got interrupted by the Whirlwind and actually ended up knocking it slightly out of path. Whirlwind once again though with a shot when he's back away. Whirlwind bit fired slightly later. The PDES might have actually wiped one of these squads because they're a bit grouped up. The Whirlwind will go down. The Wall Spider does melee it down with its heavy melee power claws. But Blue Team are going to continue pushing in. That Whirlwind is going to get repurchased here by Dark Creek. You can see him teching, or not teching, you see him purchasing another one right away. Max just sitting in mid, kind of defending that VP. 2 to 1 cap, but though. Batch is fleeting the outside of this gate, though. No shotgun blast is available. Apo does heal these tactical marines and banshees will continue to destroy them. It's special as well. Tactical marines could go down here. Banshees are going to try and chase, but the banshees are now in trouble themselves, and they do back away. Wolf spiders coming in. Dire Avengers also here. Could see a grenade. Grenade does get thrown. Does get dodged here by Indrid. Some scouts here trying to fight some wolf spiders. Shotgun blast will knock them over. Will destroy the terrain around them as it shoves them right through. That Apo is in risk of dying, but does actually heal himself, and now he's back up and he'll be healthy enough to live. Kinetic Pulse onto the double CSM, but Banshees are forced to back away before they're able to tie up those CSM. And Max is just down here, destroying walls with these ASMs. Pedo shot will miss. And this Havoc Squad will need to back away here. Indra's Havoc Squad losing two models there, through that grenade, but Dire Avengers also going to lose two models as well, so that Pedo shot and back away to base. Indrid having a very strong steamrolly army here. Raptors, I imagine, might jump in here. Warp Spiders hidden by the hollow field, but PDEVs though will actually land a shot. These Warp Spiders will go down if they're not careful. Raptors do jump in onto that Guardian Weapons team. That power is extremely effective. It actually hits the Shuriken platform instead of the models surrounding it. But Raptors though, again, suppressed by this other Guardian Weapons team and power claws onto the Warp Spider as well, trying to do some damage on retreat here. You can see him charging in. Wraithguard also trying to get a shot in as well. Whirlwind actually misses all six missiles. And do I actually have a PDF shot that managed to make it through this little gap in the wall? And did see the warp throw grenade combo, unfortunately failing though for a Guxus as that PDF shot did knock the warlock onto his feet and cancelled the ability. PDF shot though. Going to damage the wall slightly and hit these Wraith Guard as well. Wraith Guard do not have an Exile leading them, but Warp Throw and Banshees fleeting in here though. For Z sort of Banshees don't actually have an Exile wall. That is a dead CSM squad. That was just too much for them to handle. The P Dev shot the Banshees and the Wraith Guard, but the P Dev shot will save the second CSM squad. The Exile dies just as it was purchased as well. That Heavy melee exile with the executioner will go down for a second time here for the Z-Sword. Dire Avengers pushing in a fire prism trying to do what he can but focusing down the Plague Marines not doing much damage to them. More P-Dev shots coming in. That Guardian Weapons team is so low we'll back away. Fire prism trying to do some damage to these Plague Marines. They do actually have a lot of health regen especially under worship as well of the shrine. Could see another grenade here. Except for that whirlwind is just causing so much pain here, but the grenade does get thrown, does actually take down a tactical marine model. And power blades doing a lot of damage to this whirlwind. This whirlwind will probably go down. Rear armor hits, the scouts are path blocking it, trying to repair it at the same time. But that will actually go down. Level 5 warp spider, still no armor on the warp spider yet. Could see some phase armor later on. And looks like some D cannons are going to be coming out as well. The cannon will be a good choice against the shrine playing very statically up top on well, their setup. But we do actually have an avatar from a Gux that's just making its way top. And he's aspiring champion heretics. You need to be careful because the avatar, if it does land its ability, I forgot what it's called, but if it does land its ability, it will go down. But the D cannon, look at the damage it's doing though. And the banshees are going to flee in here for Z Sword. The heretics are going back to worship. But Banshees are going to try and bleed as many models as they can. In fact, the Heretic Squad will probably go down. And Banshees will take it down, and then the Shrine will be the focus now. Avatar doing so much damage with a single swing, and Indrid is actually mid now. These Raptors taking a lot of damage. The Spiral Champion has stayed alive for quite some time here. <laughs> doing a lot of damage to those Warp Spiders. They will get forced away. Stangard veterans here for Max. Still level 1. 
everyone tier 3 except for Indrid who's currently tier 2 but Chaos don't necessarily need tier 3. It's like walk throw with the avatar here. The shots are taken down a tactical marine model there. Double Dire Avengers focusing on these plasma attacks. Plasma attacks very good counter to the avatar since it's super heavy infantry and also again good against the shuriken platforms, the cannon platforms and bright lance platforms since they are also heavy infantry. Banshee is going to take a plasma shot to the face and force command teleports in though with that thunder hammer doing a lot of damage these banshees just going to be forced away straight away but the force command might go down as well but the howling banshees will also go down. ASM finishing in retreat, which played the Kernus doing a lot of damage here to these ASMs, and ASMs might also go down as well. Some big losses from both sides. Wraith Guard going to be pushing in. P Devs like, ooh. Taking down three models on the Warp Spider squad, they're not exactly cheap to replace either. We do also have the Providence as well on the Guxus, and when you use the Providence army, you want to make sure that everything goes off cooldown before you use it, otherwise, you don't get that massive cooldown reduction. It doesn't take effect immediately. Your abilities actually need to be off cooldown, and you need to actually use them during the Providence for that massively reduced cooldown. Avatar going to be backing away on 2100 health. We do actually have a distortion going to go down. Indrid is going to back away, but the Plague Marines look like they might get caught in this. And they will. But it's not doing too much damage to the Plague Marines. The CSM were probably the target instead. We do have Banshees trying to come in here, but we do actually have the Plague Champion with that Power Fist, or that Plague Fist, even using the Pestilent Strike to actually stun these Banshees in place. And it is actually going to be enough to protect his CSM squad as well. Some sneaky scouts here. Apo getting thrown across here. He's Wraith Guard, you need to be careful. Probably you should get behind some shields if possible. They're <laughs> taking a lot of damage. P Dev shots though. Hitting some of these energy shields. Energy shield has actually run out of health. Needs to regen. Raps is going to be jumping onto this guarding weapons team here. And they will actually take a lot of damage here as D cannon lands a perfect shot onto them. The Play champion back in the way, Plague and Marines taking a lot of damage as well. He is just doing so much damage, actually destroying these energy shields. We have another distortion going off, it's going to force these scouts away. Looks like it will catch these P devs. And it will. And D cannon land. Ooh! Wow. Fire Prism D cannon will actually be enough damage to take out those P devs and Tactical Marines, but this Fire Prism is taking a lot of damage. Plague Marines just need one more hit. Terminators do teleport aggressively here. Their power fist will be enough, and the Plague Marines will actually get a snipe there with their missiles. And Max's Terminators will now go after the Guardian Weapons team. Don't know if Morgan has realized it. Banshees are coming in, but the Guardian Weapons team will lose two models. Banshees are going to try and do what they can. These Terminators don't have teleport available, and Max does not have a Librarian. Neither does Riku. You can use the Librarian with the Gates of Infinity to get your Terminators out of there who teleport in aggressively, but the Force Commander though, with the Battle Cry and the Thunder Hammer, is going to be forcing them away. We do actually have an Orbital going down, it's going to catch out three setup teams, two D-Cannons, one Guardian Weapons team. We have the Avatar coming in here as well. That Force Command is taking a lot of damage and will be forced away. We do actually have a Predator for Riku. And it looks like one of the setup teams will live. It will be the D-Cannon setup team here for Riku. Falcon could actually 1v1 that Predator with its energy shield on full. Avatar just going alone over here, although the Warlock is here, along with the Warp Spider and Exarch as well. And that's going to be forcing Max Power's setup teams away. Predator is back away here from these Wraith Guard. Ooh, look at that damage though. Half health ready. Although the Predator doesn't actually have any improved armor. It looks like the Warlock has actually got the Half Darkness. There's no way these Wraith Guard are that quick. Where is Z's hook? Yep. Yeah. No, he doesn't actually have it. Those are some very quick Wraith Guard. Must have been using the Fleet of Foot Global. Providence, though, on the Guxus Warlock. It's actually just <laughs> run out, in fact. But Providence does grant you immunity, or invulnerability even. And on top of that, all your cooldowns are reduced to nothing. Falcon here for a Guxus. Getting chased down by that Terminator Force Commander. Terminator Force Commander is armed with a Power Fist that does do 85 DPS and also a Storm Bolter that does 33 DPS, very effective in both ranged and melee. I'm kind of surprised that he's actually gone for the Terminator's Force Commander since he did actually have an upgraded Force Commander as well. 
normally you see the Terminator Force Commander if you don't have any upgrades. But Terminator Force Commander with a heavy flame, it could be really effective here. I'm just going to have a couple of models knocked back here. Well, look, we're also going to get Force Away. Double Dive Rangers are pushing in as well. The Predator is backing away. The Predator is a bit worried of these Wraith Guard. Apo is going to force melee these P devs though. Going to be a grenade. We'll lose a model here, but those Wraith Guard will go down. In fact, Wraith Guard's only left with the Warlock that leads them. So we'll need to replace all these Warlocks. Looks like the Fire Prism isn't using its dispersed beams. Looks like using the Focus Beam. And Ranger's going to barely get away here with one HP. We do actually have. An Eldritch on top of this Predator along with a Haywire Grenade. This Predator is actually backing away into the Eldritch Storm and will go down. Looks like that Eldritch was from Morgan M or G-Man. can see him lacking the red. Z-Talk and the Guxus both actually have enough red for an Eldritch themselves. Actually, Guxus is slightly low on red. But Indrid also has enough red for a nuke. Riku is getting close to having enough red for a nuke as well. Darabin just taking a lot of damage here. Some more PDF shots. This VP will probably remain neutral for quite some time. But 1D cannon, 2D cannons makes it very difficult to play against. A lot of set-up teams here for the Elder. Plague Marines are pushing up. There's a lot of D cannon here, but it's just unset up here for Zetor. A distortion will be enough to pull away that Plague Champion. does have the Armor of Pestilence, but I'm pretty sure that he does get pulled in. Even with the Armor of Pestilence, 39 VPs, 285. Distortion is going to go off all the way over there. I think he's trying to hit these. Devastators a bit blindly. But these devs will not set up. Banshee's just going to flee in here though. P dev shot will be avoided as Banshee's actually leap onto their target. The Warlock is also going to leap onto the Plague Marines as well. Fire Prism actually doing friendly fire damage to that Dire Avenger squad. And Indrid is coming in here with a Predator. Predator doesn't actually have a mark just yet. D cannons also doing a little bit of friendly fire damage. Warlock got full Z squad. will back away. Fire Prism P devs. This is a very difficult VP to actually try and cap. Armor and Pestilence is going to give him enough health here, but he could also use the Pestilence Strike as well. And it looks like he doesn't have it available. Do actually have a nuke going off? But a nuke is kind of in between everyone's army, but that Guardian Weapons team could get pulled in. This D cannon could also go down as well. That Guardian Weapons team will in fact go down, and that D cannon actually getting friendly fired here by Morgan's D cannon. Problem with D cannons doing friendly fire damage. These Plague Marines will be enough to take down this Fire Prism as well. Indra is taking down. Quite a few units here. Predator here for Riku is pushing in. Meanwhile, this avatar of the Gux is still alive. Double assault cannons here for max power. One on the range Terminator squad and one on the Terminator commander. And VP will go to blue team here. The cannon tries to take a shot. The Predator will miss. Wraith Guard going to try and take a shot. Will miss. Looks like they're ground targeting. But Riku has dodged that. D cannon will also miss a shot. Another Predator. Predator is going to have the Market Corn upgrade here for Indrid. Warp Throw and an Eldritch as well. That Eldritch will miss. That Predator is just too quick here. Distort Field onto the Wraith Guard as they try and cap the Avatar for a Gux. It's just going to try and come up here. Needs to be careful of these double Predators because they will be able to chase down very well. That P Dev squad does need to be a bit careful. Rangers also take down a model of this P Dev squad. And do actually have an Orbital going down. The Orbital is going to hit these Wraith Guards, going to catch out some Banshees, a D Cannon, and another D Cannon. Wraith Guard will live, a D Cannon will live. Banshees will live. This D Cannon didn't even get lifted up and just didn't even care. Do actually have what looked like Phase Shift. Avatar. Going to catch out the lead Plague Marine model. That Walk Spider is going to be able to barely escape by the looks of things. Grenade getting thrown onto the Apo. Apo is level 5. Play Champion level 5. Terminator's Force Commander. Well, he's a Terminator's Force Commander. He doesn't have levels anyway. And Indrid looks like he will lose a CSM squad. They were upgraded with the Mark of Zinc upgrade. Predator also very low here. Distortion going down. The Predator is well for Dark Riku, very low. Play Champion is capping, does actually have the Pestilence Strike ability, the Swarm of Flies surrounding him, reducing incoming range damage here by 90%, although that doesn't actually affect it for the damage over time from the D cannons by the looks of things. The Apo even healing him as well when he's actually taking very little range damage as well. We'll have to now run out and the Play Champion will take full range damage and we actually have the Mucus Discharge as well. The Apo Play Champion combo is a very annoying combo with the sheer amount of healing 
We might in mid, we do actually have Guardian Weapons team going down here to that Terminator Force Commander. This Terminator squad will go down by the looks of it. D Cannon will actually snipe it. Nope, the Falcon will have to snipe it. Terminator Force Commander will also need to be careful. Full also will actually shut down this Providence Warlock. Providence doesn't actually provide you with knockback immunity, which is very annoying, given that you have invulnerability and everything else, just not knockback immunity. Deacons should be focusing down these predators. I think that warlock does not have Providence anymore. It does need to be careful. Distortion going down once again and top. 29 VPs to 227. Blue team are holding in here with their 2 to 1 capping. Ninja needs to be careful. Wraith got thrown at this predator. D cannon shot will actually be enough to finish that predator off. Another distortion going down. P dev shots all over the place. Going to shut down these wraith guard. These double plague marines will get pulled into that distortion. In fact, that plague marine squad will avoid the distortion. And the Guxus is just going to be defending mid. Looks like he's sending a D cannon up to help with the setup team spam here. We already have three D cannons and a Gux sending a full fawn up there. Apo gets pulled in by a distortion. These warp spiders do need to be careful. Level 3 though, do land a haywire grenade onto the predator of Riku. They're taking a lot of damage. Even when level 3, don't actually have above 1000 HP. D cannons though, triple D cannon shot, triple damage over time. That lead model of that last cannon, the Havoc Squad, just got absolutely destroyed. And <laughs> look at this, more D cannon shots here. I'm pretty sure they're at maximum range as well. But P devs as well. The avatar will catch out these p-devs. In fact, actually, I expected a bit more damage there from the avatar. But more p-devs. This howling banshee squad is hidden by Ranger Hollowfield. Rangers are still alive. Devastator is getting forced away here. Havoc's getting forced away. Dark Avengers getting forced. Even taking damage from friendly fire D cannon. Play champion is just going in here. Does need to be a bit careful though. He is alone right now. As much as he is very tanky. He's actually getting hit there by a friendly p-dev shot. And triple D cannon shots on top of him, we do actually have another distortion that will catch out the Plague Champion. We do actually have a phase shift onto these double Plague Marines as well. Plague Champion will go down. Warp Spider Exarch here will go down as well for Morgan. Those Plague Marines are just. I thought they might be getting nuked. We actually have a warp front to these P Dev Squad. P Dev shots also hitting the Fire Prism as well. Predator looks like it will be able to get away. The Plague Marines are coming in to actually flank these D cannons. They managed to just walk straight up to them. A Warlock is here and they will actually snipe the Fire Prism and they are probably back away now. D Cannon as well is actually aimed towards them. We do have some more shots going down. Play Champion is going to actually cap under fire. The Apo has actually healed them back up to full health. Double Predators here. We do actually have another distortion to pull the, Preds pull the Play Champion away. These Double Predators though. Now, distortion looks like it does miss. That D Cannon will get forced away. Red Team actually forced all the way out of top right now. Terminator Force Commander retreating away. No more Terminators here for Max by the looks of things. Fire Prism going to knock down these Plasma Devastator squad. This Plasma squad will run all the way back to base. Looks like Red Team will mass mid as they say in the chat. Mass mid is probably their best bet right now. Combine all the decans together. 29 VPs to 163. Blue team just getting out all the vehicles, Riku on two tanks, Indrid on two tanks, max power gain, Land Raider Redeemer as well, which you can use as a retreat beacon. Even have auto cannons set up inside this building as well. Riku does actually need to repair his predators. He's got some scouts though. Play champion could repair this second one. Looks like he's on his way to do just that. If they're pushing through mid, they need to set up more towards this direction rather than this direction because they will get flanked from top. That Predator though for injury taking a bit of damage, does go in a bit aggressive, no mark on it, we do actually have the Warlock going in with the Ethereal Slash onto that last cannon squad, in fact Hollowfield's just going to stealth all the army here. There's just a massive push for this VP, Haywire Grenade onto Indrid's Predator, the Fire Prism might be able to chase it down. Blake Marines also coming in mid, that Chaos Predator so low, phase shift onto the double last cannons. But a nuke here from Indrid's going to force away the Dire Avengers, the rest of the army needs to move down slightly more south. Double last cannon devastates look like against that. They're actually going to retreat through this nuke. Dire Avengers might go down. Rangers getting pulled in as well. Double Plague Marines going to shut down this Fire Prism. Tactical Marines though for Riku very low. Last cannon is getting unset up once again. The Predators are coming in as well from the flank. Trying to get repaired up at the same time. The Fire Prism goes down. The last cannon Predator 
But the Blast Cannon Devastator Squad is getting quite low. Predator will go down to the Falcon and Avatar and the D-Cannons also can set up inside this building and Eldritch going down onto Indra's Predator will actually be enough to just insta-gib it. Blast Cannon is still doing a lot of work but the also can still set up inside of this building. If you're all slash it's going to be missed though. That was kind of doing a lot of work to the Falcon D cannons now setting up towards mid. Plague Marines moving towards the D cannon. The Avatar is just going to go straight for this building. The building does actually have 2000 HP, so it's going to be very difficult to actually kill the building. However, does this ability do damage to units inside of a building? It actually does. It does bring them down to half health, but we do actually have grenades here for a Gux. So that also cannon squad is probably going to go down. Will go down. That force. Uh, that Plague Champion with the Plague Fist will also go down. Triple Dire Avengers will be able to out repair any damage that that Plague Fist is doing, although it's actually doing a lot of damage. Level 8 Plague Champion. However, uh, Plague Marines coming in from the side. That Energy Shield needs to get turned on right now. The Energy Shield does not get turned on here for that Falcon P. That's also going to land a nice shot to the Dire Avengers as well. More Dire Avengers coming in here this time from Z Talk. More PDF shots, gonna force Guxus into a full retreat. Before Terminator Force Commander goes down, D cannons, though two shots onto the Stand Guard veterans do bring them down to two models. And I think everyone's got a nuke at this point. I think Guxus has a nuke, or he's very close to a nuke as well. Sick House getting purchased as well. Warlock just gonna go in here. Does have the ethereal slash of cooldown, I would imagine. But full also though from the APO and P devs as well. Going to knock that warlock down onto his feet. Ranges getting hit by a grenade. Here comes the ethereal slash though. But here comes the P dev shot, and that warlock will go down. Damage over time from these plague marines is going to be a bit too much for the warlock to handle. 29 VPs to 49. Red team really do need to make a big push now if they want to come back in this game. They're currently a 2-1 to one cap, so the VPs are bleeding slightly slow, but still they do need to do a big push. It looks like a big push is coming in. All the decans are pushing forward. That Land Raider Redeemer is going to be a crucial target. Everything's going to retreat too, in fact. It's going to get nuked, I'd imagine. Decan in the squad is actually going to take out some scouts. There is an Eldritch here. Looks like it could be two Eldritches. But it is just raining thunder here. We actually have a triple cap. With these Dire Avengers, they're all trying to blob cap at the same time. The D cannon's doing a lot of damage here, so everything around the Land Raider and to the Land Raider itself as well. All the Dire Avengers backing away. It's now a one to one cap. We do actually have Assault Terminator called in onto the D cannons. One D cannon is going to get forced away. Distortion as well onto the Land Raider Redeemer. Wall is going to try and jump in onto these Assault Terminators. If he has Providence, he might be able to hold them off for quite some time. Second D cannon squad is going to go and get focused down. Land Raider Redeemer does get taken out. VP remains neutral. It's a 1 to 0 cap front currently for Red Team. And Red Team look like they might be able to pull this in. Blue Team are bleeding VPs. And that Warp Spider is trying to cap that VP. And it looks like he is not going to. He's still capping even though he's knocked into his feet right now. And he might just sacrifice his life for it. Phase Shift though is going to prevent the Stand Guards from capping. But the Apo doesn't actually get affected by it. And will remain capping Seer Council here for a Guxus. Very spread out. The Warlock is also here. A lot of power melee. But Plague Marines are infantry. Looks like the Warlock's just going to go straight for that victory point. The victory point top is now for Blue Team. Seer Council here for the Z Talk. Not going to be enough by themselves. And the Seer Council as well. Trying to push in here, but the Plague Marines are so tanky. Do have a drop pod coming in. Blue team on 4 VPs, red team on 20 VPs, Warlock is getting a decap as well, nothing can focus him down right now. Seer Council getting focused down, Plague Marines will get away with one model, Seer Council do have to back away, Providence is used though, onto that Warlock, any kind of knockback on these P-Devs, p, -devs. p -devs actually hitting the Terminators as well. Bought Spiders, do you need to teleport once again and interrupt these P-Devs though? The Warlock does get forced away, this VP still remaining for Blue team though. But still more units here for a red team, reinforcements. But still nothing to actually force the APO away. In fact, what is actually capping this? I thought it was the APO, but the APO was very far away, so I'm not sure. But red team are capping it right now. Dire Avengers, Seer Council though, gaining extremely low, might go down, but four VPs to 18. Red team just desperately needs to cap this. If they cap this, they will win. Blue team has nothing to actually go for red team's other VP right now. And they're actually going to land the cap, a Fear of Slash as well. And Tactical Marines, by the looks of it, are trying to get a decap though, but they're not going to be quick enough, and Blue Team will actually lose the game. Red Team winning with 18 VPs total. And what a long game that was, and how much death there was throughout this game.